to make this car, we actually ended up using five different cars. We cut up two FB Holdens, we had two Nissan Skylines and a VN Calais. My name's Kylie from Canberra ACT and this is our 1960s FB Holden Tailspin. My first car was a Holden One Tonner, which uh, was a great farm vehicle. I lived on a property uh, an hour south of Canberra. My background of growing up on a farm, I was always involved in mechanics with my grandfather and Adam's father's a mechanic and, and he was interested in cars and had some, some cool cars growing up. He'd actually gotten out of the car scene until he met me and a couple of months later we, we started building our one tonner together. So kicked it off and, and started with just what we knew, which was the very basics with building the one tonner and then evolved onto building what you can see now. We hadn't seen anything for quite some time that was really out there and different. So that's what we wanted to set out to build. So from that, we basically went home and started looking through our street machine magazines and looking at the concept vehicles that had been designed by artists over the years and saw the EK back to front two door concept in the uh, magazine and went, that's just, it's out there, it's cool, it's different, uh, it's a Holden. So we decided basically from there, this is the car we wanted to build. And it just so happened that there were two FBs for sale um, on the south coast, not far from home. Um, packaged lot with a whole heap of spares. So before we knew it, we were off to the coast and picked up sort of two shells and had them just sitting there ready to go while we spent about 18 months planning. We started off by, I guess our initial thing was trying to find a roof line. So the concept actually had FB panels grafted onto a, a Nissan body, but we wanted to drive an FB Holden, so we went the reverse and actually sourced a roof that would fit onto the FB. So that started off with a whole heap of measuring cars in car parks for length and width and diameters and everything to try and work out is which roof line was going to fit. So we did that during the planning stages and, and worked out an R33 Skyline was going to be the best fit for what we were after because it fitted within sort of 10 mil of the FB um, pillar to pillar dimensions. Adam did a lot of the main structural um, elements, the MIG welding and, and the real strengthening and, and mechanical side, and I did the, the tedious fiddly little jobs and a lot of the TIG and the stainless welding and uh, the die grinding and polishing side of things. And then Howard Astor was involved throughout the actual sheet metal fabrication part of the build. So he used to come here one weekend every month and uh, spend the weekend with us work on the car with us in the garage and give us a list of jobs to do for the next three weeks until he came back again. And then for the final 12 months, it was almost a role reversal where the final body work was done at Howard Astor's. There were a whole heap of challenges along the way. I mean, every corner you turned on a build like this is another challenge because you're trying to mould together so many different cars and different panels and in places they weren't designed to go. So the engine bay is a Holden 5 litre. We wanted to keep Tailspin as a Holden. The whole concept of the, uh, of the car was that we wanted it to be something that GM may have produced back in the day. So it's a 308 block with the VN injection. So it's got all Crow Cam's internals and flat top pistons and stage three cam and, and all the good stuff to make it go well. But it's still got that factory feel about it. So we've got air conditioning. We wanted the car to be a cruiser. Now that it's done its show scene, it's, it's our Sunday car to, to jump in and drive. The majority of the drivetrain uh, came out of the VN Calais that we wrecked. We've got the Turbo 700 gearbox and the Borg Warner diff. It's got Commodore disc brakes all around, which have been die ground and detailed to death. Basically, it's a RodTech front end, which has given us the nice suspension and travel, and it handles really well. It's, it's just a comfortable car to drive. It, it really does drive like a sort of a, a VN Calais model. The exhaust is stainless steel, two and a half inch, made here by myself. So the wheels are a shot velocity rim, 18 by 7 on the front, 18 by 8 on the rear. We were trying to go with sort of the old school Lakester period sort of feel with the wheels. We actually spent a whole day uh, masking them up and sanding them back to, to paint them the same green as the engine bay but in a satin finish to really give it a bit more depth and, and something a bit different. 
So with the interior, we actually had red decided before we knew what the exterior of the car was going to be. We always wanted to have a red trim. Part of the classic styling of an FB is the dash. So having the original dash um, modified to, to suit the rest of the roof and, and the skyline um, glass was quite a challenge, but we really wanted it to feel like a, an old school car. So we kept the original gauges We've painted them um, and given them the tailspin sort of touch. Really it was about having a functional interior. So it's carpet, it's not leather floors, it's a car you can just jump in, you don't have to worry about taking your shoes off and, and go for a drive. So obviously a car like this takes a whole heap of parts from a lot of different manufacturers and makes and models just to make it work. So there's Fiat headlights, we've got a Mazda uh, fuel filler cap, we've got a Daihatsu charade condenser for the air conditioning and we've got a Volkswagen Golf bonnet catch and there's just all these different little bits and pieces that go together to try and build a complete car. The colour we decided on was a colour that we hoped wouldn't date. We went to PPG and said, I said, this is our idea and what we're thinking. And from there, they mixed up the colours that ended up on the car with their vibrance range. So the green gold actually has a whole range of different coloured pearls and different coloured glass, which is why the colour flips from being a gold in the sun to quite a green under different LED lighting. TS green gold, I think it was, or TS lime gold. It's it's Tailspin's colour, it's uh, now in the PPG charts. The same with the, the candy red and the dark green. So our goal when we started to build Tailspin was always Motor X. Um, initially we were aiming to be a Motor X Superstars finalist, to, just to get a jacket was, was the initial goal. As we sort of progressed through the build and, and the quality was getting higher and higher, we, we set our, um, a, our goals higher and higher and we basically just said, look, let's build the best car we're capable of building within our time frame and budget, obviously, but to be the 2017 Grandmaster at Motor X is mission accomplished for us. I mean, the car, it, it has its lovers, it has its haters. Um, it's, it's one sort of car that everybody seems to have an opinion on, which is good, it sparks conversation and, and it challenges the, the boundaries of what is the norm and what is acceptable. And I think that all adds to, to sort of the achievement that we see as being a successful car is, not, not following the same rules, pushing those boundaries, and at the end of the day, we achieved our goal, which was great. Well, that was a nice intro, Dar. I think our job's done here. Do we, do we pack up now? She's so good on camera. Isn't she? Kylie just done a wonderful job. Unbelievable. So I've spoken to the guys that did that footage Yep. It's enabled us to actually be able to play it okay. on our channel, which was yep. really cool. And I yep. thank them very much for that. And obviously their logos and stuff will be in, in the description. Yep. But um, unbelievable car. Oh, absolutely. Like polarising a lot of people. God, you know, they, they loved it or they hated it, but it doesn't matter. The amount of work, the engineering that went into that is just blows my mind. It actually gave me a bit of grief early on because of the negativity towards the car that I really hadn't faced before. No. I, I found quite um, quite hard to take. Mm. And I, I mean, to some extent now, I often make you know comments about it, but there's no denying the amount of effort and time mm. um, that was put into this car. And as you'll see as we go through it, the amount of effort and time by everybody, especially yep. Adam and Kylie and yep. PPG and myself and yourself yep. and Darren and everybody else. They, the fact that we've had that lead in now, we've, we've seen what the car is and, yes. and what it does yep. and um, what their goals were with that car and how mm. it all came about. So what I've done now is put together a whole heap of photos that takes us through that journey, which mm. was over quite a few years. Yes. And um, the first photo straight up is out the front here. Um, when they came down for their first visit to, to do their first planning session. The infamous planning session. And the with first thing yeah. that I see is that the, the, there's a lot more in the view because the trees are growing a lot. <laughs> but more importantly, just how young we all were because it's yeah. a few years ago now. Yeah. And um, Life's moved on for all of us, mm. really, in a lot of yep. ways. And Adam and Kylie now have um, parents proud of, parents with parents a couple of, of young yeah. girls and yep. all those sorts of things. So the the whole car and the process obviously came from that um, Strength Machine magazine expression mm. session. Yep. And that's the, the main shot from that. 
And one of the issues we faced in building the car was the fact that when we looked into it and we spoke to Linda about what the thoughts were when, when she came up with the concept mm. for that particular plan, um, it was actually holding parts onto a Nissan. Yes. But it was a 260Z or a 280Z. 280Z, yeah, I think it not, was. Yeah. Not actually a Skyline. But no. when we when Adam and Collie wanted to actually have it as a holding platform mm. with the Nissan roof, um, we then had to go out and measure different cars. And I sent them off to measuring the... Measuring tape? Well, yeah. I just said to them, go to, go to the nearest decent size um, car lot. Yep. Scrap and, yard? And yep. No, no, they just went to the oh, shopping centre. Okay. Just went to the shopping centre and wandered around <laughs> with a tape measure and found a car that... We needed one where the windscreen was wide enough to go okay. between the pillars. So yep. that, that's how, how mm. it evolved and, and how it ended up. So as Collie's always already told us, they found a couple of, um, couple of cars. Mm -hmm. And these photos here is the first weekend where I'd actually gone down or up. Is it up or down, down to Canberra? It's down. It's down, down is it? Where we are, it's From down. where we are, yeah. down to yeah. Canberra. And the plan was was to cut the roof off the FB mm -hmm. and then take a roof off. They managed to score it just a shell. Okay. Um, so that we could sit it on there and get an idea what we're doing. Yep. So these photos here, it was sort of all hands on deck. Um, Adam was on the nine inch and pretty quickly got rid of the roof and Made short and, work of it and yep. the B pillars and then we took to that's me in the background and Adam in the front took to the roof of this skyline that they'd managed to score for nothing and once again all hands on deck and mm. that gives you a bit of an idea of this the, the skyline roof versus the FB roof yeah yeah a little so, bit of rake on that windscreen compared yeah, to the, so the standard one that's how things have changed isn't it yeah with the modern cars now. So once we set it on the car, we then, and part of my thinking was always the issue was going to be wipers mm. um, to get all that to work. So the idea was to try and graft the full plenum off the Nissan right. into the FB. And that's what we did. So we needed to sit it on there, get an idea how much we need to cut out. And then we trimmed the plenum down as much as we could and then started on the, the FB to make a bit of room. <laughs> So we got the front down, you can yep. see the pillars sitting on there. Yep. And then once again, the rear, it was a case then of saying, like, okay, how far down do we need to get the rake of the window yes. and all those sorts yep. of things. And this weekend was all about, first of all, seeing if we thought it was possible. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, my concern was, once we got a bit of a silhouette going, whether it really was the sort of car they wanted to build. Yes. Because, like I said, you're going to have a lot of time and a lot of dollars in it. Mm. You don't want to build something you don't want to know anything about. So you can see you've already cut a quarter off, or both quarters off, and now we're just starting to sit those on. And then I've got the old um, core flute and a bit of tape and a yep. few, few um, rattle cans of, of matte black to give us an idea on, on a silhouette. So. Yep. I pretty much left them with that and I said what I want you to do now is walk out in the shed each night and have a look at it and, and, and see, see, whether still you, like it. see whether you're <laughs> going to like it because you've got a lot a lot in front of you yeah absolutely over I mean, the year, next, years of work. next few years yep. and a lot of yep. dollars and a lot of time to invest into mm. the project so it's all nice to look at one front three quarter shot yeah well it started with a two-dimensional drawing exactly right so so the decision was let's do it okay so pretty much they then were looking at, they'd already started working with an engineer. We'd, mm -hmm. we'd done quite a lot of um, work before we even started cutting things up to make sure it was going to be possible to register it. And hence and the it, planning sessions. And it, yep, yeah, and it's registered in New South Wales as a two-door conversion of an FB Holden. Okay. The actual reversing of the panels and all is not actually required. No. No to be noted even because it's you can take you know your, yeah, your front you guard off and put something else on yeah. but the issues come down to heights of lights mm. you know ticking all the boxes for all the different adrs that apply to an fb holden and if i remember correctly it's registered as a four seater that's correct because yeah. an even width of how much width is in the passenger area to to allow it to be a four seater as opposed to a yeah, five seater and, and, and we'll talk about it when we get yeah, to the trim cool. but yeah there's all those sorts of things so mm. The blue box section you can see there now is, is the start of the strengthening because it's going to be a V8. Yep. So the thing about putting a, a 308 into a, an FB Holden is not new. No. So there's no. there's already rules and regulations to follow in relation to actually putting um, the strength back into the car to yep. make sure that it can 
be registered with those things. So the string line up the middle there now is obviously to get everything centered and work out mm -hmm. where things are going and looking at how much of the original dash can be kept yep. with that whole Nissan thing going on. And what the process was then was they found a complete Nissan okay. that was a write-off yep. and can, started to strip that down. And you can see that photo there where mm. the, the, the rolling floor is still there. Yep. They've actually taken more of the car this time though. So they've taken the sill panels Okay. And now looking to sit that on. So it's basically like the to, cockpit, the cockpit or the... Basically taking the whole mm. thing. And, and part of that, the reasoning for that, working with the engineer, that enables it to keep all the seatbelt mounts okay. on the, the B pillar and then utilise the hinges and all for the doors because the plan then is to use the Nissan doors, okay. which gives you the late model door locks, yeah. you know, burst proof yep. locks, uh, intrusion bars, all those sorts mm. of things. So you're actually adding value to the, 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 in, the yeah. in, integrity, integrity of the vehicle, of the vehicle yep. is, is improving rather yep. than going backwards. Yep. The problem was, of course, the FB is a lot deeper than the Nissan. <laughs> so they then had yes. to go about um, improving and, and grafting and mm. moving things around. So That's the reason had, why it took a long time. The mm. sills had to come down and then Adam and Kylie are doing all this, by the way. I'm, yes. I'm not even there. We're you know, having a few discussions on the phone mm -hmm. and they're talking to the engineer about what he required. So the process was to go along and, and extend everything down. And at this point, um, Adam's on the meet. Mm -hmm. And um, we progress down that track where Kylie learns to use TIG and all as we go through, which you'll see in, in a lot of the photos. So you can see there a fair bit of strengthening going on on the inner sill. Yep. And I thought that was a cool shot, looking out through the window with um, Perry's scrapyard, all the bits mm. and pieces. So a couple of Nissans and a couple of FBs laying around, and then once again, all that strength on the inside. Yeah. And part of the, I'm sure there's a photo here somewhere where there's actually a bar that ties effectively where the rear door was to to tie all that together. Yeah, okay. So once they'd sort of got to that point, it was decided to take it off and get it blasted. Okay. And this is it now back after the blasting. And as you've seen working with me here, you then see what you get back. Yeah, how much is left? That's right. <laughs> so Adam then embarked on, you know, more rust repairs. Yep. And you'll see further on where they basically use rust repair panels to, to repair the floor mm -hmm. and then made a decision later on to actually make the floor yep. um, new because they bought some new tools and <laughs> decided to yes. get a bit carried away. So. Obviously, that's the Nissan door frame, and once again, it's not deep enough. No. So they've no. had to stretch that, and I found that amongst all the photos, and it's interesting how often that's in someone's hands. So the vehicle standards yes. bulletin to actually mm. know what needs to be done, because a lot of the things that were being done obviously needed to make sure they comply. Yep. So. So the doors were deeper. Doors. Because of all the, the, the opening, the, opening, the, opening, the, opening, the hole's now bigger, so the, the yep. idea was to use the Nissan frame. And you can see how much they've added to the yep. bottom of the door there. Yep. And then we needed to roll up a, a door skin. So like I say, most of this is going on when I'm not there. And I got a bit of a shock the first time I went down and, and they said, you know, we're ready to sort of move on. That the angle on the door, if I was there, I reckon I would have straightened that up. Yeah. Because the FB was dead straight. Yeah, okay. And it always looked to me a little bit too swoopy. Yep. But then once you get, you know, you work on it, you get used to it, it yeah. wasn't there. Like you can see there the straight straight down. Yes. Whereas once it gets made and trimmed, yep. it's got that sort of later model look. Mm. And they're the little things that sneak up on you when you're mm. doing this sort of job to try and work out what's going to work and what's not. And Part of the issues with this whole build was to be able to utilise all the Nissan rubbers and all on mm. the glass. So the fact that you're lengthening it, keeping the shape, means you can actually just get two rubbers and cut it and join it. Cut it and join it, yep. And still utilise it. And then part of, from a show car point of view, when they were making all these door frames, the idea was then to make the frame so when the door trim sat in, it had like a step back so that you couldn't see the end of the door trim. Yeah, okay. Um, I seen that on a on a fifty six Chev or something one okay. day, and I was showing Adam and Kylie. I said, "I think this is a really good idea and a good way to go about it." 
So as things progressed, you'll see in some photos where you think, well, hang on, didn't they do that different to that? Because yes. they're learning. Sometimes they went, you know what, we can do that better. Mm. And that's what I really liked about working with them. They were happy to accept the fact that they can do it a better way and, yep. and moved on. And, and that and was did it that way. Yeah, right? that was probably the biggest thing of the whole lot. When when you started with Adam and Kylie, like you know, Kylie didn't weld. Um, Adam welded, but he wasn't that good. And by the end of this project, phew, impressive. Very mm -hmm. much so. And I mean, part of the process that when they approached me was that they wanted me to teach them how to build a car. Mm. So they, you know, built the one tonner. Yep. And what they wanted to do is to, to step it up another level. Yep. And in talking to me to work with them, the whole process was about, we want to learn from you how we can do this on an ongoing basis yes. for a long period of time. And of course, now we all know that's that's been the case. So that's that seat belt I was talking about. Yep. So um, Nissan belts. And then there's a couple of shots here where they've boxed in the rear. And part of that's all about, it's actually got two parcel shelves. So the original FB one's still there. And right, then okay. the Nissan one sits on yep. top. And once again, that was just from the engineer. And it, it added a huge amount of strength to the car. Mm. You know, mm. it gives you that sort of box section across the rear window. Yep. And we're just progressing along now through those stages to the point where we need to now start working out how long the quarter's gonna be. So mm. we know we're gonna use the headlight as the tail light, yeah. but we but had the option to have it as far back as we want. Yes or as high or low as we mm, want. Because you were starting with a blank sheet. Exactly right. So Adam whipped up the little frame there mm -hmm. and we made a bracket up to mount just the headlight bucket and then started running some tape and to get a feel for where we wanted to go with it. So the wheel arch is obviously still the quarter panel mm -hmm. and we had two cars. So we had a, a couple of guards we could play with. So I just cut the nose off one of the, the worst ones and then mocked up that front from when yep. we were doing the, um, so I've got what's left of the front guard because I wanted yes. to use the wheel, the wheel arch off the front guard. Yeah, and the top of the rear and quarter. And the top of the rear quarter yep. would and go to the marry front. them together, yeah. Yeah, so that was, once again, messing about with bits and pieces to get a feel for where that was all going to mm. go. Once we sort of set up the heights and the length where we were all happy, so we've got the bumper just sitting there to get a feel for what we think it might look like, yep. we then mocked everything up you can see all the frames and stuff so everything's yep. just being held on yes you wouldn't what, want to open the door in a, in by, a strong wind but whatever we had <laughs> to, to get a feel for what we're going to have yep. once we were comfortable where that was going to be we actually then i think we tech screwed that frame to the chassis mm. a couple of nice little family shot there yep i think that was for street machine mag actually so that bit of pipe up through the headlight there, which is now the tail light, we then decided, right, now we know where we're going, we'll pull all that tape off and start thinking about how we're gonna frame this up. Mm. So what you'll see me doing now is just trying to get some lines to how we're gonna transition from that quarter panel up mm -hmm. into the roof line. Yep. And, you know, to get some shape to what potentially is gonna so, be a car. Yeah, so it looked, like one piece. And then the next bit there with the, the mm -hmm. dent in it's the, what was the rest of that quarter that we'd cut off. Mm -hmm. um, just sitting it back on to get a feel for whether we wanted patterns in the quarter or whether it was yep. just gonna be a big solid shape. Once we had that in a position, I then started using some, you know, five mil, I think it was five mil solid round. Yep. Just to, you see a lot of the, the guys that do the um, custom cars. Yes make their shape like that. So mm. the plan was then to, to put that together to work out how we can get the shape right. And then we needed to get the transition from the back window down to where the quarters were gonna be, gonna meet yes. the boot lid. Yep. And that panel that went across the front where the wipers are, we're now putting on the rear <laughs> because we needed it to step down. Now, if the audience is lost at this point, totally understand. Yes, yeah, because I'm lost too. So, <laughs> but yeah, so, it now, all works. so now the flat sheet, yeah. we've cut a bit of flat sheet to say, okay, well, is this going to work? We want to use the full Nissan window, rear window, yep. and we need to get the step down. And you'll see in a minute, so I was talking about new tools. So this was their new bead roller. Yep. So we, we're all learning to, mm. to work that one. 
So we rolled up a piece to go with a reverse, you know, the turn to yes. tipped over the edge so that it sat on the, the windscreen, knowing this was going to be a removable panel. And then you'll see where the clecos are there. We've now made the shape so that it now fits yep. what is now the quarter, which is actually the front mudguard. Like hmm. hmm. Yeah, so I follow pretty, that. It's pretty simple. <laughs> and then <laughs> just tacking that together yeah. to get a feel for where we're going to go. So that was like one of those three day weekends that I've mm. gone down and I've gone, see you later guys. Yeah, you can finish the other side I'll see, now. <laughs> I'll see you in a month. So while I'm gone, you better fix all this rust up on the rear. Yeah. So I left them to then fabricate up the rear. This is why they didn't have children for a couple of years. Because exactly right. this was full, full, on. Time, full on. Well, they both had full time jobs as, as well. well. As well, yes. So the plan here now was to, they needed to lengthen the back mm -hmm. of the car a bit. Yep. To accommodate what we were doing with the quarters and then started making up floors and they always wanted to run a full size spare. Mm. So you'll see as the photos go on where that all gets built. So I'm back again now. Mm. That was so, quick. So, now, yep. so this <laughs> is one of the good guards. So you can see I've sort of cut, marked out where I think I'm gonna cut it. So I've cut that piece out and then headed over the English wheel because the FB has got like a little ridge along the top. Yes. But yes. where we wanted it to sit, it wasn't on top anymore. No, it was was off to the side. So it was eleven thirty, not twelve o'clock. So we got rid mm. of that to start with, and that's what we're doing there. And mm. then the next photo, you can see the the one with the red on it is still flat, and the one in front, the yellow one, is curving up at the back. Yep. So I'm just using the wheel to move the metal up, and then you can see the lines going this way where I want it to come. Out yep. around the quarter. And this is all to blend in and yeah. Yeah, you... to try and make, well, there we go. Yep. So, so now it's coming up and starting to run into that um, C pillar. Yep. So there's Adam and I. So I didn't own an English wheel at this point in time. You didn't need to. No, Adam and well, Kylie went and bought one. They found one. one. <laughs> no, yeah, they found one on, on, on um, I don't know, one of those cheap sites for yep. um, 500 bucks or something. Yep. So we were all learning again on how to use that. and and. I found, as I always do, a bit of a knack that I could just work out where it's going. I watched a couple of YouTube clips and how hard can it did be? those it's sort of it's things. It's so you can see now I've got both of those starting to head up the, yep. the quarters into the roof and still looking a bit lost here and there. There's yeah. still a few bits not attached. It's a bit Frankenstein at this point in time. So you can see that bit with the slots across the back window now where yes. you can see where those come down that yep. used to be the bonnet that's now going to be the boot um, to get some sort of shape so between trips they've got the guards blasted mm -hmm. and Adam's got a bit of sheet metal rolled up just down at the local sheet metal shop because we didn't have anything long enough and we then started pushing that around and it was prior to actually getting to this point we actually cut the well, we Adam cut the inner wheel arch and we cranked the outer lip out. Yep. About 20 mil because the quarter looked like it was rolling yeah. under and, yep. it, and it didn't look real good. So uh, Kylie and I then hopped on the wheel and did a bit of work with that to get it to work as a quarter panel. And then you can see now I'm tacking all that in. So the wheel arch is the FB and where that slash was going up the side and a couple of other lines we decided mm. to get rid of all of those so we spent a lot of time messing around with the chrome strips and the stars and yep. the badges to get work out where we needed things to go with the body line and i guess that's the hard thing with a build like this how it is because this is so unique there's nothing and to go by there's nothing to go by yep. but you've got to have an eye to what the finished product's going to look like exactly right and you've got to keep in mind okay if i do this how does that affect the outcome now I'm going to try and move on a bit because we're 20 minutes in already and I've got no way. <laughs> so, I'll shut up then. No, no. Oh, we need to do it. But I mean, I'm watching yeah. the clock and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do this in any amount of time. So we've jumped a bit anyhow. So both quarters are done now. The front door skins are looking a bit better. And we're now making that mouth opening that's yep. off the front of the car that we're now making the rear. And what we really hadn't thought about in the early piece was that being the front fenders, there's actually no boot channel. No. So Kylie made the boot channel mm. from scratch. So you can see there now where she's made that side there, 
and you can see the opening there now and the fuel tank and where the spare wheel is going to yep. go in the bottom. And then this is a way later where she's actually made all of that channel. And I mean, that must have been very time consuming and, and a bit of hair pulling. And mm. it was all made so you could put a pinch weld with the rubber on the top. So it had a traditional boot rubber. Yeah, again, it was all to look factory. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, you know, fuel tanks, parcel shelves, and then um, we ended up using the boot lid because the bonnet was just never going to work. Yep. Um, but we had to cut it and shut it. Yep. And move it around. I don't even think I've put photos. There's so much stuff in this car, I just, I can't put it all in. No. So these panels look like they'd sort of fit, but then you've got to start massaging and cutting and shutting and, and moving stuff around to get it to work. And then I got my way a little bit that we ended up with some Galaxy mm. tail lights. Yeah, you a little got bit a, of forward in there. That's probably where all the negativity comes from here because you were working on Holden. That's it. <laughs> or and mostly Holden. So there we were. We're still smiling at yeah, this Yeah, well, that's good. That's, that's good. good. So then heaps of welding. So oh, all the way around, so everywhere. Yep. Um, and I mean, it wasn't all smooth sailing. At times you do something and you do one side, then you got to make the other side match. And then yep. you look at it and put the levels on it and go, oh, hang on a minute. This isn't right. I need yeah. to push this this yeah. way or move something that way. So we're constantly looking and changing things all the time. And this is all at Adam and Kylie's place. This is still all at Adam yeah. and Kylie. So I was yeah. going there three days a month. Yep. And then they would do all the work in between. I'd leave them a list mm -hmm. and head home and we'd talk on the phone and stuff yep. and then they'd send photos, updates and things. That bump bump, back bump was looking real nice. There's yep. a massive amount of hours in that. Yes, it was. I'm not sure if I got a few photos in there, but um, I did some, Kylie did some, Adam did some. So the photo we're looking at now is, is the, the A pillar on the driver's side and the front guard that's had a big piece put in it. And I don't quite know why I'm looking at it yesterday. So the issue again is, is you've got a door and a pillar and nothing lines up. Mm. So you've got to then try and create the, the curved bit down the bottom is where the chrome strip's going to go. So where's it going to meet the pillar and what angle and all those sorts mm. of things. So then you start adding metal. Yes grinding welding to get it to actually look like maybe it belongs. Mm. And then when you open the door and clear it. So that's the next thing here is <laughs> Kylie actually made this contraption that was tack welded to the car that created the curvature of the door so that when you open the door it wasn't going to grab on the guard because mm. we didn't want to make the guard. No. So a lot of time and a lot of thought put in yes. a lot of those little things. So. Once we got the quarter made, we then had to get it to transition from there back up to mm. the floor because it's now a front guard that's acting as a quarter panel, so it doesn't sort of work <laughs> yep. the way that the quarter used to. So we had this big void. So we decided we we create a bit of a um, it looked like a sponson on an aeroplane or something. Mm. So I rolled up the corners um, on the wheel, a bit of the old sandbag and the hammer, and then wheel them to actually create that corner so that that could be all welded in and would be the, the well either side of yeah. um, the spare wheel. And then while I was doing that, Kylie's then making up the one where the leaf spring goes um, mm. to actually box that in and make that look nice. So that's pretty much the end result there. Upside down in the... Um, and then the bumpers yep. to fit around it. Yep. So all of those things have got to be taken into consideration when yeah, you're trying mass, to make, Massive amount of fabrication. Make all these things. So that's the rear. So now the front, so we've now got a quarter panel and I've got the wheel arch off the, the fender. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, and I needed to get it to clear the bigger wheels because yep. we were going to a 17, I think, mm. 18. Um, I, I opened those up a bit and then attach those. And I think these front guards were made out of about eight pieces yep. in the end. Um, and that's just clickoed together there. Oh, the top bit's welded in. And then we just keep progressing along. So the quarter panel you can see was this much too short. It was like nearly a foot short. So I had to put a piece in the back of that. And then this particular day we were mocking up the front. And the issue we had is what to do about a grill. Mm. Because it had to have it, it needed a grill. I didn't want yeah. to look like a Tesla. No, you know, it had to have something <laughs> going on. 
but the problem was it. we looked at like a 55 Chev looked pretty good. Yep. And then one of their friends turned up one day in a EK. Okay. And that's how we ended up with that on it. So we've jumped back to the rear, but so we'll talk about that. So that's pretty much finished up there now on the panel where the number plate goes. Kylie made all that up um, yep. between trips and I knew we were going to jump back to the front. So now we've got everything sort of in place and the loaner wheels from the neighbour off his Commodore or something that were on the car pretty much all the way through. And all of a sudden we've got a boot hinge. Mm. To I go don't know how, whether you've worked with hinges much. I've had a little bit trying to adjust but them they're with not, you. they're not a lot of fun. <laughs> and I said to them, I reckon you need to go on the wrecking yard and find a car that's got a bit of a similar look about it. And there's the pile of hinges. <laughs> <laughs> and they still end up making their own. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one of those things you don't think about because you need the boot to open and then clear things mm. and shut properly and, yeah. and still be functional. It was crazy. I think I had those photos that I've got to put them in here somewhere. And I thought it was quite good. So this guy's turned up in this car and we've looked at the EK and gone, I reckon that can work. Now, I've got a photo here of it. Did you drive away with the grill still in it? Or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I put this in because people that know their Holdens would know, but mm. it's normally the full width of the car. Yeah. So Adam's had to shorten the grill. He had to first of all find a decent one. Mm. That's, that's a needle then, in the haystack. Then cut yep. it up because the headlights above it, where we've now put this, yep. Inside, so we've—I can't remember. It was like two full fins, I think, taken yeah, out of the middle. Quite a bit. So it's still all holding. It's got the nice little dress trim to put the mm -hmm. edge on the bonnet, but it's in between the headlights rather than yes. under the headlight. So once again, it was all fabricated mm. to make it fit this particular car. So this was—I um, think there's a little video coming up that I, where I talk about what was going on. So the grey bit between the white lines is just a bit of core flute at this stage. So we're just trying to work out how we're yeah. going to make it look and what's going to work. Well, there's that grill. So that's how narrow that grill ended up. Mm. And then the headlights, because they're, they're now you mean headlights, the tail not tail lights. <laughs> I put this in because a lot of people wouldn't even, even think about it. To mount that headlight, it had to be adjustable. Yes. So Adam's made the brass bit up there and, and got all that to work and then the chrome plater welded that brass mm. into the cast aluminium to be able to get the headlight to work. And the headlight, I come up with the headlight because the Fiat 500 we did mm -hmm. had the little tiny headlight and I yes. had one, yes. one of this, the ones This should use. fit in that, that slot pretty there. well. Yeah. So that's how that came about. You've got a pretty good eye for those sorts of things. And say. then that there is Adam and Kylie with that book out again. Yep. To work out whether our height, because your headlights mm. have to be a certain distance minimum off, height, yep. minimum height, and same with your indicators. Mm. So all of those things again for Rego, we needed to look at all of those yep. things and take into consideration that it was going to work. Now you can see there, the first thing I see is the gap between the door and the. I was hoping you wouldn't notice that. Yeah, <laughs> they're the sort of things that <laughs> yeah. took a bit of effort, absolutely, to make it all come together. So. Mocking up. Another trip. Mm. So we're now at the front, sort of roughly how we want it to look. Mm. And then I turned up on the Friday and they were off to work. So I said, I'm going to have a go up this panel. So I got some little strips of one mil, just cut them about 20 mil wide and bent the shape to get what I wanted and just click at them or tape them in place to work out how I needed that height for the motor. Yes. And the, the curvature is, a, you know, the inner... What would you call it? The um, inside the, the engine, engine bay. bay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So that inner panel, yep. we wanted to utilise that and keep mm. that. So we needed to be able to go from there out to the quarter panel that's now the fender. So I made that up, taped it up, and then sent Adam and Kylie a photo on their phone. Yep. And said, "What do you reckon about that?" And they went, "That doesn't look too bad." And by the time they got home, I had one rolled up, ready. Just a, well, mm. I got, got well, a fair lump of it out yeah. of the way, and then persevered to get. You can see my lines running this way, so mm. that when I'm running the wheel, I'm not running off track. Yep. And what I was looking for was to come across and then down and back up again, yeah. a bit like a 55 mm. Chev. 
So yep. I was trying to keep Keeping it the style having and the, yeah, yeah, a bit of style flow, about it. Flowing lines and... So same deal, easy to make one. <laughs> and a mate of mine, Mark and Tolly, that's a um, coach builder, yep. he said, yeah, when you're doing that car, don't go and do one full panel and then go and try to do the other one. Yep. When you make a piece, make the other side. Yep, before so you go on to the rest. So yeah. I took that on board and this this was, um, I think this was by Saturday night, we were going out to a barbie that night. So this, I wanted to, these to get these done and I took the photo before we went out of the two upper panels. That fit between the guard and, and the it, bonnet. sitting yep. there now. So that's the pair of them in. That's a bit later on because it's got the, the, the lower bits as well. Yes. But you can see now how it sort of goes out. But unless curves. you saw the photos, you wouldn't know how that was created. That's it. So here's a little video. Things progressed pretty well today. It's been just over two years since this project started. Adam and Kylie today can actually see what their car will look like. So all three of us have been on the front today doing bumpers, making the front fit. So we now actually have a car that we think looks pretty cool. It's got some really good shape. Pretty cool for a Holden day. And yeah, that, that's, like that, you take that as a compliment <laughs> when Howard said a Holden's cool, so yeah, we'll go with that. So, still a lot of love needed yet, but the car now... We're only two years in, Howard. It. It's a great amount of satisfaction to get to that point, Absolutely. I can tell you. Certainly had some, some time, lots of trips down there. So, thanks for watching once again. And we'll keep you posted. That was before I knew you meant to hold the camera the other way, Doug. Oh, it's a learning curve. <laughs> so I'm tinkering away on the outside. Yep. Adam and Kylie are still working away on all the other things that got to be done. And mm -hmm. one of those things was the dash. Mm. So what, with what we just did with putting FGs in the early model, this is the opposite. We've now got a bigger windscreen yep. with a smaller dash. Yep. So Kylie's taken on... Um, She's been watching me over my shoulder with the TIG welder, watching what I'm doing, and she's getting very, very good at the TIG welding. Mm. So she's actually started mocking this up, and if you look here where it wasn't long enough to go out to the pillars, she's actually started fabricating all the bits and pieces up, and that's all tacked up with the, with the MIG. And then she's TIG welded it all, and then made the extension with the, the flutes, um, she rolled in and then cut so the, the, the blade the for the demister. Yep. So that's a bit more progress there, all those clecos. And then had to mount the air conditioning controls, mm. make it so it would take a single DIN stereo. Yeah, because being an all metal dash. All as those it was, things yep. had to be modified to be able mm. to do it. And then that's it blasted because it was re removable. She so was yep. working on the vents with it. So that's just one of those things that was going on when I'm not there. Yep. And then that's the shot of it when it was here. And I think you might have rubbed a bit of filler on that when it was here. Mm. So you can see that centre section's got the oval in it for the aircon gauges yep. and the glove box is all nicely gapped and everything looking honky-dory. So that was the dash. And then the other things they were working on is, was obviously driveline. Mm. So they're running a, a Commodore rear um, yep. with the original leaf spring. And the reason that we ran the leaf spring was the, to maintain... Um, for Rego, mm -hmm. because we put the modified front end in it, which came with its own engineer's report. 308 um, with a um, Turbo the, 400 is yep. all legit era, yep. and with the correct subframe connectors and those sorts mm -hmm. of things. So then the next part of that, they put a rod tech front end okay. in it with a rack and pinion. So all of those things came with the paperwork to be able to do that. And then they also put an under dash brake unit in it as well. So this was all Adam and Kylie's <coughs> work Excuse to progress me. through that process. And then it's engine mounts. Hmm. So I'd work with them and, and my, as you know, my theory is, you know, keep it simple, use an existing bush out of a suspension component to make your engine mount and use a bit of box section and then dress it up and make it look nice. So that's, Adam's got that all in position sitting there. So 308 with the VN, top end on it yes. so the part of the thinking there is is the block that they use was like a whatever era so a, like a 60s yeah, so like ADR pre, wise pre-pollution pre yeah all that sort of, of thing, stuff yep. 
but then they're running air comm power steers. So then you've got to manufacture all of those lines and brackets yeah. knowing that it's going to be full on. Was it running up. the Nissan firewall or was it the Holden firewall? Holden with firewall. The Nissan so top just adapted? The, yeah, the top, yeah, the, the plenum. plenum. Yeah, okay. So those inner guards and all, they had to be, you know, it's a fair bit of modification done, mm. but the plan, the engine number's still there, and the plan was to keep the integrity of mm. and style of the car. Yep. And then uh, this was what I was saying about the floor. Mm. They ended up making the floor. Um, and when I seen it, I went, oh, look at all them ribs. <laughs> Knowing yeah. quite well, I'm going to have to. Yeah, I remember. Oh, I'm straighten gonna have them to, all and, I'm and straighten them and and fill them and do all those sorts of things and, and polish them. And, uh, when you're going to do the full polish, um, it's always a lot easier if you haven't got a whole lot of ribs. Mm. And then these shots here now is where they started making the inside floors to cover that yeah. transmission, and that's the floor that they made up. So they're pretty handy. Impressive how far they come. In, in you know a relatively short time so then that's the seat mounts in the blue yep. and then that's that under dash unit i'm talking about yep. and you can see the the bracing behind the firewall there to to handle all of the different things that were going on mm -hmm. and then it had a um like an american stainless steel steering collapsible steering yep. shaft and then of course we needed a fuel filler mm. so i think this was car number five or six so it was a mazda a Mazda RX-8 or something, something like, like that. I think it was, yeah. So once something again, exotic. got the template, made a template of the quarter panel, went to yeah. the wreckers and went, yeah, this one. that one, <laughs> I'll use that one. And then got out to put it in. So we're progressing along nicely. And then I started working <laughs> with Kylie about how to go about die grinding all the parts. Kylie the die grind queen. So mm. she spent... Talks about it all the time, but I don't remember the amount of months or years. But she wore out a couple of die grinders. Yep. So these were some factory manifolds that um, of a spe specific car that flowed pretty well. Yep. And they weren't chasing a lot of power anyhow. But you can see there how much effort she's put in to grind those up. And then the same with all of the other engine components mm. and transmission and all were all die ground brakes. Head. So block, the standard head training. there. And then you can see that inlet man that exhaust manifold doesn't match the, the ports on the head, so we'll just cut the ports off and make it match yep. like that. Yep. And the crazy part is, and, and you get caught up in these things, is that when you look in the car, that's facing down. Mm. You don't see it unless you go and look for it. Yeah, mm. and that's from a judging perspective. I always preach to everybody, you can see everything. Mm. So engine block, heads, and then all of those um, aluminium panels and all, Kylie actually welded all those and filled up all the mm -hmm. little bits and pieces that were factory. To, Any imperfections were... To get rid of those. Yep. And then while she was up to that, Adam was making all of the the grill mount at the top with the, the Mazda bonnet lock. Um, mounts for radiators, air conditioning, and then Kylie's still die grinding. Months and months of <laughs> dry grinding. Yep. And then I've now done a bit of a section on the trim. So the seats, God, I just read the other day, yesterday, what they were. They were out of something, um, I always think it was a Toyota Sora, but it wasn't. Le it was Lexus. A Lexus. Lexus. They're out of a Lexus. Mm. And the, the reasoning there was that once they went looking for seats, they found the back seat was almost a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. And that'll crop up here in a minute. But I just wanted to do that first so you can see the centre mount handbrake and the shifter and then I'd, I'd suggested to them to go with that style of wheel which they liked anyhow but we did some mods on that so that was just like a eBay Grant style steering wheel. Yeah, look like your Mustang. Mm. Pretty much and that's that rear seat and then the rear armrests are actually out of the, the Nissan yep. but as you started to mention earlier the, the width between those armrests determine whether it's a two or a three seater. Mm. So if it's got room for three seats, it has to be a three seater yes. because you will put three people in it. Yes. So Kylie had to make those a little bit wider yeah. to get that distance to keep, down. To keep it as a four seater. To keep it as a four seater mm. and be able to make the seats mm. look nice like that. So there was a fair bit of transitioning of um, those side pillars, a bit like mm. what we did with the, um, the boss. Yep. 
and then Kylie made the console. And you can see there with the air conditioning vents coming through, um, they got the billet ones from the US and then made the pocket in order to be able to take the handbrake. And then right on the far side there, the speakers. So she's actually fabricated that kick panel out of, um, out of steel, out of one mm -hmm. mil. And then under the dash, under that glove box, that's normally just an opening. So she actually made that panel mm. to be able to trim and paint all those different bits and pieces, which we'll see in a minute. And then the sort of things you don't think about is that we've actually utilized the whole um, door handle, the opener. Yep. So then they had to make their own little arms and stuff to be able to work and not rattle. Yep. And all the rods. And, and the rods oh, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then the door's now deeper for the glass and yeah, just goes on and on and on. <laughs> it's... And then Kylie made all the, or I'm sure it was Kylie, but Kylie and Adam made all of the, um, the boot fabrication. So they, mm. they did all the fab and then they had a trimmer, a friend of theirs the do the trim. Yep. So that rear section around the locks, he's made all that out of steel and you know, left the clearances so the trimmer could actually trim all that. And you start to get a look like that then. So the full size spare, and this is still all in camber, isn't it? This, the, Cars, the, the car yeah. hasn't left their place yet. <laughs> yeah, it's still there. And part way through. And that's why I put all this trim stuff in because the car's still there. It hasn't yeah. come to me yet. Yep. And then the rear parcel shelf, I was talking to her about on one of the trips about you know what they're going to use for speaker covers, and I was telling her how you could do this, and I've seen it done but never done it. Of course, she had to go, mm. and my does. So is there nothing that this girl can't basically do? Basically a press yeah. to be able to press yep. it out. Yep. It's a matter of spending the time and That's it. do some research. You've got a lot of patience. And they like lists. <laughs> That's just one of their lists. When one you list. used to go there and, yep. and you, you, you tick off yep. whatever you, you managed to do on, the, on that particular trip. Now, I put this in because a lot of people may not even notice it, but as you know, I'm, I'm a three color person mm. and you sort of stick with those three colors through the build. So this is obviously the dash. Yep. So all of those components are all painted the green and the gold yep. from the car. And then the needles, I think, were the red from the interior. And then they had the, all the letters and that redone. Yes. With a reverse mask. And I sprayed the, the gold onto the back of the... It was impressive. I yeah. mean, it looked factory. But it, but it was so yeah. much work. But geez, it looked good. And there'll be, I'm sure, a finished photo of it coming up. And then this is that grant steering wheel in my hands where I've got that at my place and, and give it a grind up. Well, you're grinding, the shape. grinding the little finger just recesses the little, in the yeah, back of it. They're, they're always a bit notchy from yeah. the, the cheap ones. So I just made it nice. And then I just used some black, what they call China black stain to make yep. it still timber, but really mm, dark. Bit of cabots. Mm. And then, yeah, brushed on the cabots. And I normally put like three coats on. Yeah. You know, every couple of days put a coat. Yep. And then sand it back as if I'm going to polish it and then put that the house paint in the spray gun and spray the last coat on and it always comes up really nice so it's, it's a really cheap way of doing yeah. a really nice steering mm. wheel and I threw this in even though it's I know it's out of sequence but at this point in time Adam was trying to buy quality bits and pieces for the yep. Nissan and he couldn't get them and he ended up buying all new glass and rubbers and all for the top half of the car okay so with that and the stuff you needed for indoors and things it was about 10 grand for the new nissan stuff but it showed mm. and once again we needed to make sure so this is at my place that those rubbers were all going to fit the body mm. and it was about making the body fit the rubber because that yep. portal window one was like 1500 bucks or something. yeah you couldn't change it no so and, and it was designed to clip in and stuff so yep. we managed to get all of that to work and then this is um, just all part of that trim thing. So I will find out his name, but a, a friend of theirs that was a stainless steel polisher. Yep. Um, had closed his business up, but did this as a favor for him. So he, he was the guy that cut and shut the original four door trims and turned them into longer mm. ones and shapes and all for us to be able to mount them onto the car. And there was, once again, a lot of work required to do that. And then I love this shot. This was setting up for photos when it was at that point where Street Machine were doing the bare metal yes. part of it. And it was getting ready to move to my joint. Mm. 
So this is the first time it came, and you, the first thing that stands, well, two things that stand out to me. One is the, the mirrors that I'm glad we didn't use, because we were humming and harming what to do. Yes. Because yes. they bolted onto the factory door, but it just didn't work. Didn't work. And then the wheels, these are the new wheels now, but they hadn't had the paint treatment. Mm. And the amount of grief we wore over the wheels for a while as well, and once we put the green on them, people, I think, come around a bit. Yep. Some of the ideas I had for this car, I always felt it was a full custom car, and I would have liked to have had more custom traits. Yes. But they wanted to build a street machine. Mm. And very much for them a cruiser and a... And, yeah, and, and it's a... like every car that I get involved in, it's not my car. No, that's I right. I can only advise on what I think yeah. they should do, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's got to be what they want. Yep. And uh, yeah, it, it certainly ended up a lot further down the track than what you know looks there. So, Oh, Dale is that Walton. The bald head in there. So we then had to get it ready to put some epoxy on it. Mm. And part of that process is to get all of that gunk out of all of the... The thing's been in bad metal a couple of years. Yep. So what I'm looking for then is we've got a wire wheel and we've got to clean and we've got to sand all of those hard to get to areas to make sure the stuff's going to stick. Yep. And five, ten years down the track, they're not going to have little creepy crawlies coming out. So... That process starts, and then even though the roof come off a pretty good car, it still had the usual dents and stuff in it, so the opportunity was there to flip it up. So cleaned the roof up, ran the file over it, and um, we're now sort of putting stuff in deoxidine mm -hmm. to get ourselves ready to be able to try and seal up the outside of the car. So that's that spare wheel compartment that I was talking about yep. earlier. And you can see I've painted the inside of those quarters before I fitted them, but I've been welding and yep. banging and heat carrying on and, and yep. all that sort of stuff. So all of those areas had to be sanded and cleaned up before we could, um, and that looks like it's about to get painted because that looks like yellow tape on all the holes. It does. <laughs> so all of those things have got to be cleaned and you know no rust and no oil and all those sorts of things. And a little noisy video here, Dale, but whilst things weren't looking too bad, my aim was to get as least amount of filler as possible. We're always going to have some. But I was looking to get some shape with a bit of heat and a fair bit of hammering and someone's grinding in the background as well. So I think my initial thoughts is we were meant to spend three, four months. Yes and then it turned into six um, and as you can tell there just in that one area I'm just looking to and I'm just using the heat there to to release the metal a bit because yep. it's under a fair bit of tension I found that, it, that as much as I hit it it didn't want to move but if I just put a bit of heat on it and then give it a whack it just let it go a bit yeah and I was you know I hadn't done a lot of this sort of work so I'm sort of learning as I'm going and I'm jumping on YouTube and working out what I need to do. So I worked my way up through the panels and then I'm sure in a minute you'll see where I start taping the steel to get my body lines because whilst yep. I've got the general shape there, I wasn't planning to try and get all, there we go, to get all the lines right. Mm. So I needed to determine that line that's going to run up that pillar yep. because I can still move, move that steel around enough to actually change the shape. And then once you've got one right, you got to do the other You've side. You've got to make the other yep. side match. So you can see there with the file, I'm getting to a point where even though that's been massaged and through the wheel and that a fair bit, there's not a lot of um, low spots no. in that. And then the same applies for every other panel. So that one's the bonnet. And there's a fair bit needed to be done to the bonnet because I had to extend it. We hadn't mm. made a decision with the bonnet, with the wiper arms, whether they'd go yes. under the bonnet or not. Okay. And you'll see in a minute where we do that. And then all those rear panels to get all the gaps right. And then we're now at that point where you can't leave it for later. No. It needs to be done. So people always, I remember, used to say, I'll oh, leave it in bare metal. It wasn't that good. No. It was good, but it yeah. wasn't that good. <laughs> I've seen some guys, some, some very talented people out there that can file stuff up and it yep. looks like they've never been there. Well, that's mm. not me. I mean, I'd, I'd still like a bit of filler. And there was a, there was a few panels joined together on this. Yeah, so but I've seen guys join panels. Yeah, and okay. But 
I mean, with what we did, I was more than happy where we ended <laughs> Put up. Put a bit of colour on it. And it's interesting, you know, five years on, I've only seen the car the other day, like a month ago, and it still looked perfect. Yep. It's amazing, it hasn't moved. And I'll talk about that later, why I believe that's so. So, we're working now with the bumpers and the chrome strips to make sure that everything lines up. And you'll see, once again, with photos down the track, why you have to do that mm. with all these chrome parts because you can't change the chrome part once it's chrome. No, that's it. So, gaps, and it's interesting, I've put this one in and a lot of people say to me with these shows that they like the fact that I put some of these things in is that clearly I wasn't happy with the alignment. Mm. So I just cut it and pushed it out and welded it back together again because I welded it on the first time. So I just, you can push the metal as much as you like, but yeah. if it needs three mil or it two mil, it's go. not going to go. Yeah, exactly. And what I'm looking for is that. So I've been heat shrinking the, the quarter, and then obviously the door doesn't align, and I need to be able to go straight through without putting three mm. mil of bog on there. So run the blade up it. Yep. Well, the easy way is to bog it up, isn't it? But that's not. It's just what not going to last. It's not going to last not exactly. Last. So there's them wheels, mm. hubcaps, and. To me, I see that line again from that door. Mm. Um, but that's the car, that's what we built. So we're obviously working towards um, getting those strips mounted on with the tape and all there. Darren's nice. Yeah, the Coop black, in the background. Blackman Coop in the background. There's that gentleman there. He's standing at the top of the car, <laughs> see his head there? <laughs> so another little cut. Mm. So I was talking about those side windows that they fit and they yes. glue in and all that sort of stuff. Well, the problem was, is when it went in, the top of the, 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 what was left between the rubber and the outside edge didn't match the other side. No. So now it does. Yeah. So you can see that swoop, you know, from that cardboard cutout and all that. Yeah, there's got a bit of a falcon look behind that. It looks like a guard, 63 it? falcon, yeah. I reckon. So there's that. Wash my mouth out. Oh. There's that welded back up again <laughs> and ground out to get those rubbers and yep. all those moulds. Um, we spent a lot of time on that, Howard, didn't we? We did. We certainly, <laughs> we did. certainly did. So this is me on that bonnet. So we decided that we're going to run the wipers under the bonnet. Yep. And um, that required about 120 mil to at be added out on the outer edge. Mm. And then curvature to match it so, up. I rolled that up and that's it now so it goes up to the guard and then the wipers when they're off disappear like that so we managed to use because we used the nissan plenum we mm. could use the original plastic insert and the wipers yep all off the nissan which means the wiper sweep on the glass is all 100 percent correct for yes. regger yep so there's always that method in the yeah. madness yeah, don't reinvent the wheel to get it there's mm. Mr. Walton again. Yep. Operate the bonnet. And then we needed hinges to make sure that when it went up, it cleared it. It mm. clears and doesn't knock and all those sorts of things. Go oh, ahead. That's my favourite part of the vehicle because I'll probably spend so much time <laughs> time working on the underside. So we're yep. at a point now where we're um, going to start doing some filler work, I think. So yep. in there with the uh, wire wheel and the grinder to get everything nice and clean to get some epoxy on it. And at the same time, any highs are going to go down mm. and any lows are going to come up if we can get it. And I can see a couple there where they've welded rails on the other side and that always creates an issue. Yep. So I'm just going to do the best I can with what I've got and then the rest I'm going to do with filler. So the one thing I hope I never have to do again is one of these early holds because these panels... <laughs> This was a nightmare. Were a lot an of effort to nightmare. get them to... Um, with the ribs and the to do that oh. and then the same here you can see all the, the welds in this front guard mm. so these all had to be then cleaned 15 part front guard um out on the back bench i don't know i can't might have been darren on those i think so I they think had so. to be all yep. cleaned up needed someone with some good skill not me to be um ready to go as well so obviously i've had the gun out and got some epoxy on there now a few lines and mm -hmm. those door handles so they can dig um, door handles in the US. They, this I put this little run of photos in. This is finessing that rear bumper. <laughs> so finessing is an interesting word. Here, yeah, yeah, well, it sort of fitted, but when you're chasing <laughs> millimeters, yeah. and I don't know if you remember this style, but we actually made up a little jig yep. that sat over the edge, 
So you could run it along the panel with a hole in it with the texter. So then that would give you your 10 mil gap. Yes. Or what, I think it was 10 mil that we used. Yes, I think it was 10. All the way around. And that looks like after the event because it looks nice and even. But it was a bit low on one side and a bit high on the other. So Dale's on the block. I'm not sure who's on the slide hammer. Pulling up on the corner, but holding the middle down. Yep. So we could get, there we go, that nice even look all the way along because these were chrome plated. Mm. So there's no Again. filler to make yep. up the difference. Uh -huh. And they, I spent a lot of time on the file, filing them up and banging them and carrying on. And then it was interesting that that rear bumper with those two joins in it, when they plated them, they did a really good job and put lots of copper on and polished mm. them and all that. But what nobody thought about, including me, was the fact that because you've got four faces, you mm. put two mil on each face, they grew by four mil. So on the end, they were 14 mil instead of 10. So they had to go back to the plater, grind it all back off again on, on that face, yep. and then put a very thin bit of copper on and then redo them again. So it was one of those little lessons learned. Yep. And when I look at it now, see how that aluminium one under the, the tail light mm. there, how nice that sits along the body? Yep. We had those all stripped of the chrome so that we could file up the back of them and be able to fill and massage the body so that everything fitted. And the same thing here, the headlight surrounds were all stripped yep. of the chrome. And you can see where we've been sanding the aluminium and doing the body work. Trying to get the matching and a little bit, lines. Yep. Looks like a tag hanging out the bottom a bit of aluminium that was probably three mil and it's got written headlight on it, I think, or yep. tail light. And that was the gap mm. that they all had to be. And that process gets worked mm. everywhere. So all from the, the factory, they weren't exactly symmetrical well, that's, and well, that perfect. Well, gives you an weather. idea there. Yeah. So that's, you know, the standard bucket on the mm. standard guard. And then they're sitting out past the edges and all that sort of stuff. And then this is just me working out what I've got to do with the stuff that we, we did at Adam and Kylie's that everything made, but now I've got to make it look right. Mm. So, looks like Darren's had that on the linisher, linishing a bit of aluminium off it. Yep. And then all these bits and pieces, it's just so well and have grind. A round, a round edge and a square corner and all those well sorts and grind, of ideas. Well and yeah. grind. Yep. And then this is getting a bit closer. And then you'll see those factory lead joins on the, the headlights, above the headlights. So, That's right. What I'm doing here now is where the chrome around the top was, it was, I think, smaller or bigger than the, mm. the body. So we're cutting and shutting the body to match that um, aluminium bucket. And then filling up all of those little holes and strips. And I guess that's probably the thing that the whole car, the whole body was massaged and tweaked to fit the windows, the surrounds, the buckets. Yeah, everything. You know, everything, it, the body was changed to suit the parts. Now this is one of those things where with my eye I'd go, that don't look right now. And the other photo's actually got your head in it, so I know you were doing it with me. So we've got a block of wood each side and then, and then a straight edge yep. to make sure that the distance from the edges of the bonnet, it doesn't get well, down, yep. that everything, yep. so that when you stand back and look at the car, it doesn't I didn't want it to look <laughs> like it was, you know, hanging yep. to one side. Yep. So this is a nice little video here that shows you now that all those buckets, you can see they've all been linished up and how we've got all of that metal mm. matching up to the aluminium. And what happened then was we actually sent them back to the plater, got him to polish them and copper plate them. And then they came back again after we did the paintwork. Mm. And then they were fi finalised before once the paintwork was done before they were chromed. Yep. So they went backwards and forwards to the platers numerous times, yeah. times yeah. Um, to do that. And um, yeah, they ended up with a very good relationship with them. And you can see the, the light in, on the left there um, where it's all nice and shiny. That's where we, Darren would have been initiating those mm. up here to get that to fit. And that's a good example there now. So that's after it's been to PPG, I would think, because it looks really nice and flat where we've already blocked it with um, it's at the, the high build primer and all yep. of that. But you can see that, though, I put that in now because of the line, the way that aluminium fits so nice mm. to the body. And it became really evident 
on the car. Yep. So here we are finally to that point where we can start getting some primer on. So this is the PPG epoxy urethane primer. Um, and I've got that all done, you can see in um, deoxidone. Yes, well that was our friend doing that, wasn't it? She yep. copped the deoxidine, deoxidine a lot. Deoxidine all the time. And the, this stuff's good to seal it up. Mm. And then you can start doing your filler work after that. So that's it um, outside. I don't know who's on the camera because that's me and you there, Darth. Yeah. It's been Darren. Caddy in the background. Oh, goodness. So moving forward, so panels, so everything now in epoxy because we've now got to go to filler. Mm. So the plan then is to get the shape, have both sides match, um, which is important. Easy brief, yep. And I normally would put, you know, full skim, that's to me looking at it, it's had two or three goes trying to get my shape right and match up the wheel arch and all those sorts of things. And then put another coat of epoxy on it, put my eye over it, block it again before we go up to um, PPG and, yep. and put some high fill on it. Looks like I had a bit more trouble with that one. There's a, around that door, the back of the door there, mm. you can see the extra filler trying to get things to line up. But as you know, I'm, I'm a real stickler. I don't want the end of the door to be three mil at the bottom and five mil at the top. Correct. So the slide hammer's there. I'm doing filler work, but the slide <laughs> hammer's on the floor. <laughs> a bit massaging things. Yeah. And then probably more work than the top of the car was the underside. Definitely. Um, and I know I left you with a bit of that at times. Yep. Um, the amount of filler work and finessing of panels in all those sort of mm. handmade, homemade bits and pieces was unbelievable on this car. It wasn't so much the volume of filler, it was the amount of time. Time to get it in and get it out. To get it, get it out. in and get it out and just get and it And these right. sorts of things. We, yeah. You know, I, I had deliberately left all those sort of really nice Holden patterns and all that were yep. from that 60s era. But yep. man, they just make some work. And then this is the inside of the door, remembering they've fabricated all this themselves. Mm. So then where they are looking to make all of that line up and you know have a one mil gap and um, full on show quality. So a, mass, a modified door. Mass, yeah. yeah, fully well, it's a fully handmade <laughs> yep. piece of kit. Yep. And then the top bit's removable so you can put the glass in and all those sorts of things. Mm. Yeah, incredible amount of effort to get to a point where from everyone, from Adam and Kylie doing the steel and then yep. our guys doing all the filler work to get to this point. And then wheel arches, underside of bonnets, mm. it was um, yeah, colossal. And then inside of everything mm. as well. I yep. think Darren, Darren might have been that one. I uh, that was Darren. <laughs> I did the fiddly parts. The dash, <laughs> same yep. thing. It's all nice to have yep. it all in the steel, but it's still got to be finished. And then we're then chasing gaps. We're doing show mm. car work. So this is me just doing body lines, so it's the original shape of the um, FB, mm -hmm. but you can see on the high side of the line where it's not real. Doesn't quite match. Even, so yep. I'm then massaging that, because you're only talking one or two mil, you know, to, to get that but, difference. But it's enough. Because mm. once we get all that in, and we get it in epoxy, taking the car up to PPG, up at the training center, and then it's been run through the infrared mm. on a couple of occasions to make sure that all of that fillers and primers get baked really, really yep. hard so we don't get any movement. So this is um, that process then of going into, um, into primers and then that's spray poly yep. um, we used on this one. And then Johnny H. it then came, John and I then rubbed it up there, John there. So. We rubbed the poly and then he put it back in epoxy again, mm -hmm. baked it again, and then it came back to me to then reshape it. So you can see there we've rubbed the poly. Because once wasn't enough. No. no. So then put it then into epoxy. Mm -hmm. And there's another vid coming up, I think. So then he's put a couple of good solid coats of epoxy on it. And I'm trying to remember now whether he put another coat of primer on it and then it came back to me because poly's porous okay so you can't wet rub it and you shouldn't leave it laying around in poly for too long so the aim was to get it um, all done rubbed out 
reseal with, with the epoxy and then looking at that, it's got some primer in, in around the back area and then we would have bolted the bits and pieces in it to cart it back mm. home in the trailer and now it's back home and you can see the bonnet's a different colour because I did that myself here yeah. and you can see how much John's put on there just the way it's shiny. Mm. With the plan now that I can look at that, check the lines, yep. check all my chrome, all those sorts of things. Gives you more an idea what the paint's going to look like. Yeah, know, and now that. I've got the pencil out and I've got six mil, seven mil, six and a half. Yep. And then, so we, we had to have a bigger gap on this car to get the front guards to clear the door. Mm. And we sort of run with that on the door gaps for like six mil. Yep. Um, and then here you can see, you know, four and a half, three, five, whatever. So that then you've got to go around and straighten it up. And then here where the moulds aren't lining up, we've either got to, you know, grind one down or add to one. Yep. Yeah, move that gap to the Something's left. Something's got to, well, even <laughs> where it's against the timber, yeah. you know, the left hand bit short. Yep. So with this particular car, we're looking for everything to be sort of, you know, within a mil. Mm. So here where that's not quite lining up, Pretty sure there's another photo coming up in a minute. So remember I had the ruler across these before yes. and it was pretty ugly? Yes. So now we've actually got to a point where everything's starting to look nice and we're getting our edges. And I did the majority of that in steel, mm. but now that last millimetre we're doing with the filler. And then retaping, blocking, chasing all those lines out. Yep. This is the one here I was looking at. So this is on the rear and on the top of that chrome mould where yep. there's a little gap there so mm -hmm. you can't move that so it would have had a little bit of filler put in there or a bit rubbed off the primer again either make, side make the body to suit the trim to get it the to mold. fit to that yep. trim yep and then you can start to see that line down the side there now where through the door that front door gap where you can see it's nice and straight yep. and, and and then more rubbing underneath rub 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 oh and this yeah we won't describe this part but and then this one here it's painful so this is at home so this is high build primer yep. and then blocked and then it went up to ppg and went through that infrared again and, and was yep. reprimed up there and i know that guys up there did some more rubbing so this Blue is springs. all the springs and shocks and all so at sp my place and springs I'm, were bogged and filed and, and to I've, a certain extent a lot of this i painted but i know there was some of it you know john said if you've got it ready bring it up yeah because they've got two booths up there. So mm. if, if you've got it ready, bring it and we'll yep. shoot it while, while we're doing it. And that's what this is all about yep. here, where you can see all those bits and pieces laid out to get some paint. So now we're at a point, this photo here looks a bit strange with the gray and the cream showing through. Pretty much we had it ready. John's put that um, ground coat on, the gray ground coat. And as they're rolling into the booth, I'm watching the window reflection in the the ground coat because it's got that sheen about yep. it. And I yep. said, John, come here. He goes, what? I said, look that. <sighs> so we took it out and rubbed the whole thing again, much to everybody's disgust yeah. up there. But it, it, it wasn't a lot, but I said to him, there's no good, you know, you know, I, you know I, had, it's there. I had that mood on, you know, yeah, that yeah, I get. Yeah. And I go, there's no good painting it in there. No good taking it in and painting it no. and leaving it like that. So we've got to fix it. So yeah. we took it out. He said, what do you want to do? I said, re-block it. So we blocked it again. Well, you've never been accused of doing half a job, Howard. And then so, all gets masked up. That's why it looked as good as it did. Exactly right. Mm. So then it all gets masked up and then we do all the undersides. Um, so this is that um, green gold, mm. lime gold. The Super colour. The as you mm. want to give it. So that's Casey and John. Um, so doing base coat now. So yep. that ground coat's... Um, used so that you've got a nice even base so the yep. colour is consistent right through the car and you can see that the back mask they've done like a soft mask on with a quarter yep so then you'll just paint out to that and then when it comes off of there it then gets soft mask on the other side okay along the ridge yep a little bit trendy but that's how they do it so then this is um obviously in the rotisserie and and once again solely from a points perspective um, and John being an ex-paint judge um, at Summon at some Motor X, we decided we'd do some pin lining and some different colours mm. and things. So, 
you know, the firewall with a transition, but where it transitioned, there was a pin line. It wasn't yes. just it wasn't just butting a up. hard yep. line. Yep. And then we opted to do the wheel tubs in the green. And then it had some um, a pin line running around that as mm. well. It was a bit of a pain at that point with the masking, it's, but it's it, did fun look, polish, it did look pretty cool. <laughs> and then the same, you know, backs of doors, yep. the transition from the red on the interior to the gold on the outside. Lots of parts. Lots of paint. Mm -hmm. And I, I spotted that. I thought, I've got to put that in because it's just like the blue one from the boss yes. that everyone was yes. going on about. But the reason for all the cameras is Street Machine Magazine um, came up and did a video yep. and some right. still shots yep. of this. And if you go on to their, um, their page, um, Street Machine yep. Magazine, but it's actually called Modern Motor or something. Um, anyhow, they if you just search, go on the Street Machine Magazine website and yep. search Tailspin, there's actually a video of an interview with Adam okay. and Kylie and the yep. whole painting process, which is really cool. So at this point in time, it's all assembled, do all of the, the colour, yep. three coats are clear, then pull it all apart, rub it all, check all the edges, clear it all again, put it back together, bring it home, <laughs> sand it all, pull it all apart again, sand it all. Yep. So the same process that people that have been watching in my other shows, mm. we've been doing on the current cars. And there's another video here, the, this is John just doing the boot. So a little bit of clear. A little bit of clear. And I, I said to him one day, he seemed to lose a lot. And he said, well, it's actually surprising. He said, 70% of what's in the gun goes on the job. You're only okay. actually losing 30%. And they actually do test with the different pressures and, and yep. the viscosity of the paint and all those trendy things to work okay. out from a panel shop point of view, they've got to maximize how it, much paint goes yes. on. It just, it looks, always looks bad. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, well, ah, so that's, um, it in clear, but of course that's now got to be sanded hmm. again and then re-cleared and as all individual panels. And that's the first time we've had the full panel out in the sun. John going in for a couple of photos. He's going to admire his handwork. Yep, and then in the shade. And it re the colour really does change. Mm. If, you know, if it's outside, it's full gold and, yep. it, and the green Different really angles. comes out. Yep. Now, these are some interesting ones I put in because we talked about Kylie doing all that grinding. Those calipers there are actually standard VN mm. Commodore calipers with a lot of hours of grinding. A lot. And sanding to get them to a point where we could actually wet on wet paint them so they didn't actually mm -hmm. have a lot of build. Yep. Because with brakes especially, you don't... So it's epoxy colour or epoxy and then a, a wet on wet primer base coat clear. Okay. And then you end up with that. Mm -hmm. So that process was done across all of these parts. And a lot of this stuff I primed up here and then took it up Oh, once my again, favourite part. An ease of um, <laughs> an ease of the process. Yep. With the multiple boos and stuff up there. And then it's a little bit of um, Johnny the Greek, I think, coming out in some of the colours. But we sort of talked about it, and I said, "Well, it is a show car. Let's just yeah. do it. Let's yep. let's give it a bit of bling." And then I, I seen a car that was a um, a winner of the great of the. Um, where they have the grade eight um, in the US. The same, same, no? No, no, it's at the, the um, oh, Where they Detroit would Autorama. Yeah, okay. And the thing that I look at is if you paint that red and it's really good, and then someone else paints it red with gold and green and it's really good, who's gonna get more points? Mm. So when you're building a show car specifically, and that's what we we're doing, yep. and by this point in time, we we'd made the decision as the three of us together that instead of just trying to qualify for superstars, let's have a go at it. Yeah. So the decision was then made to do all some of this crazy stuff mm. where you actually pull the tail shaft apart and paint all the individual components to, to actually get it the best you can possibly get it. So this is now pulled apart, it's all been sanded. John's in checking out, to make sure it's all good, all gets cleaned and then those final coats are clear. And I put that in, it's just a nice shot of Johnny there, but it, it, that would have been early on when we were testing the colour. Yes. I would think, by the shape of that panel there. 
So that's putting a bit of um, chrome against the red. Now, the engine. <laughs> so you talk about, so between the pair of them, so you can see the shiny exhaust there, Kylie's made the exhaust. Yep. So she's bought all the bends and all and done all the TIG welding and done all the polishing on the exhaust. She's ground up all of the components. Adam's made um, all of the bracketry and all for mm. the aircon and the power steer and all those sorts of things. And then we've got the car now ready to start accepting some of that stuff. And I don't, the engine's obviously out of position because I thought there was going to be 10 photos of the engine, which must be coming up. So this is that panel off the gun. Mm. Well, I think it's off the gun. And then I colour sanded it all back everywhere and then spent quite some weeks mm. and I think you remember mm. and they're all the different <laughs> tools and polishes yep. that I was using yep. to get it to a point where it looked like that and it showed absolutely I mean it, it, it yep. really really did um, look awesome so now we can go back into that engine so that was it assembled so that's all that bracket treat and stuff Adam yep. had made all that to fit in the engine compartment and this is me now masking up Kylie's um, grinding and sanding. And it was such a pleasure to be able to prime all of this stuff. I still rubbed it all, but you're not trying to fill big holes. Yeah, you're only, you're only rubbing it to, to rough it up, not to... So there are all of the components once that engine gets pulled apart. And I suggested to Adam and Kylie that we do all the, all the engine components individually so that when you assemble it, all the gaskets show. Mm. Because it's once again, if you've got, if you're judging an engine, and one's been assembled and painted as a piece all as together, a whole engine, yep. Then you look at the other one, and each individual component's put together, and all the gaskets are perfectly matched and fit. Yep. I like the look of that. Yeah. After assembled one, it creates a few little dramas, and I'll show you one of those <laughs> in a minute. But this car was all about drama. So that's all of that stuff in the booth. Yep. Um, getting ready for some color. So it, we opted to do the three colors on the engine. Mm -hmm. So all of these components, so they were epoxy, primed, sanded, color, clear, clear. sanded, flow coated. <laughs> and then in most cases where I could polished. So the rocker covers, the bananas as I call them, yep. across the top were all color sanded and polished. Mm. Um, and then to be able to put the engine together and not and have painted bolts, people always say, how do you do them up without messing up the paint? The bolts had a coat of um, very thin primer. Yep. They were then tightened up, sanded, all back masked, and then I airbrushed them and cleared them. So you looked at it and go, how did that go together? <laughs> and that's just part of that showmanship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is me doing that sump at home. So um, once again, you know, put the gold on to get the gold stripe and then do the red and then do the green and then clear it and then mm. sand it and then color sand it and then, yeah. And yeah, the finished product just and then you end up looks with something that. spectacular. And I, I look at it sometimes and go, it's the, the color combos and all sort of works, but does it really look like an engine? And I sort of go, does it matter? No. At the end of the day. But those manifolds are just painted in a, um, in a new cast high temp paint. Mm -hmm. So they look like they're cast on, but they're painted. Yep. And then a decision was made, rightfully or wrongfully, to use all Torx bolts on this car. Yes which turned into a nightmare for Adam trying to find all the right sizes for a starter, and then a nightmare when you're working on it trying to put it <laughs> together, as you and I found out, yep. and Darren. So there's all those colors again. So the green, the red, yep. and the gold, and then the stars off the, the FB Special, yep. and then the chrome holding badge off the, the Commodore. Every component, clean, stripped, painted. Yep. You know, the, the alternator was just not painted, it's pulled apart, painted, reassembled. Mm and you end up with that. And yep. that's really why this car um, scored so well in every That's how area, you win awards, people. In every area, because whether you like the car or not, mm. no matter where you looked, yep. 
something was done, something was finished. And that's what the judges are looking for. And they? they're very good at looking at all yeah. those sorts of things. Yep. So we're starting to get a bit of assembly going on. Now here's another crazy one. So I said to Kyla, we need to paint the inside of the bumpers, but they've been cut and shut and all the rest of it. And I said, they really want filling and I'm, I've done my share, I think. So she took them home and she filled, the put inside, the bog in them and yep. sanded them, brought them back and then I primed them, rubbed them again and again, and then painted and cleared the inside of the chrome bumpers. So if, if, Bear in mind, there's a 10 mil gap for you to look in to see this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but when you're laying on your yeah. back as a judge, yeah, that's right. You're gonna, and they put a torch in, or you put your hand in, yeah. in. If you watch the judges, when they're they're judging a car, they'll put their fingers up along and run it along, and you yeah. can tell whether it's Painted, dirty old rust polished, or whether it's rusty, yeah, or it's been all sanded and polished and, and yeah. absolutely amazing. So they were all done. There's those brakes now together. So yeah. once again, the rotors are. Um, done in that new car. Nowadays with the technology where it's moved to now, you'd probably use a, you know, a ceramic or something. Yep. Um, and then all the front end components are all polished. And what, for Rego point of view, stainless steel's a bit of a no-no from a, um, in a lot of suspension areas. Mm -hmm. So with this particular car, they were all um, grade eight bolts that were then polished. Polished. And then had a very light coat of zinc put over them to protect them. Mm -hmm. So they look like chrome, but they actually weren't yep. chrome. Uh, and then we go into, you know, diff assembly, um, Kylie and I polishing the tail shaft, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> Nothing better to do. And that's when I found a colleague, Kylie polishing her exhaust. Yep. That she made up, and that was a, you know, two into one, yep. back to a muffler at the rear, and then like the old Holden, Monaro day with one muffler with the two outlets. Yes. In the, yep. Into a twin. And then that's um, all that colour sanding. I know you did a bit of sanding on that one. Oh, yeah. On the underside of on that. On the underside. And then all of those areas, like under that boot lid, that little reverse curve mm. and stuff was just a nightmare to, to sand. But then this sort of makes it all worthwhile in the end. I need to talk over that music a bit so it doesn't... We can edit that out. But... Just the, the I, line through the middle of the boot lid there. I just know? like the way the light yeah. threw off, yeah. you know, where that sort of curves around and it's got that sort of really nice, you look at the lights, the way that yeah. the fluoros are running down. Yeah. So yeah, no, it come out really good. And I lost track of the hours <laughs> that, that went into that. And I, I, I get fixated on it and, yeah. and Kylie's got the same temperament as me. She, when, mm. when we were here doing the boss the other day, you know, like, an hour turns into two, turns into ten, and you, you just, don't even think about you it. You just get it done. And then this is, um, I thought I'd throw this in as a couple of photos here, I think, where I've got it all finished, and then I've got John to come down and, and put the big torch on it and go over it for me as a judge mm. to then say, oh, what about this bit, what about that bit? So I've actually got a, a ruler on its edge there, a bit of my timber with some 800, just getting rid of a few lines and marks that you tend to sense they're there, but you when you're doing it yourself, you go, oh, that'd be all right. Yeah, yeah. So then I just get John to come down with a white that Fresh set of eyes. And then once we'd done that, I got Kylie and Adam. Mm. I said, here's the marker. I'm going inside for half hour, an hour. Yeah. And I come out and hold it. It's like Mr. Squiggle has been there. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> not so much, not so much. Yeah. So here we are now. So we've painted. Mm. And those lights are now. Sort of chromed. No. Buckets? Yeah, no, they're not chrome. Oh, sorry, yet, coppered. Yeah, coppered, they're coppered. Coppered the words. So that we can double check. Brain and mouth not working. Yeah, yeah. so we've got to double check that they're yep. going to fit. Before we get them cramped. Because I have the option of still being able to sand a little bit off the mm. copper mm. and make sure everything's going to fit to the painted surface yep. now to get all of that to line up and have that look that we're mm. after, which we, we managed to achieve. Yep. So there's that dash star. Yeah, that was... All finished. That was brilliant. So pretty much the factory layout. Um, the, but with the all colours. Of the, the colours, and I'm sure well, somewhere in there it's got tailspin yep, written in there as well. Yep. And then this one's a really good example. We're down, you know, that 11th hour again, so all the tables are out. Well, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, nearly all of them, about yep. eight tables, all with parts, and everybody's got a job, mm. and it's polished, clean, get everything finished to get assembled. 
so that we can move forward to put it together and send it home so they can do the final bits and pieces with the trimmer and that back at their place. So that's it pretty much coming together. And um, I don't know whether the bonnet was off because it's easier to work on or whether I was still playing with it, but that looks almost like a completed car. So all that chrome's now chrome. Mm -hmm. The grill's looking good. And the last thing to be done was the wheels. wheels. And in the end, they took the car, the car was already home, and they went from Canberra direct to PPG, and I met them up there, and four of us spent a whole day to paint the wheels. <laughs> so we took the wheels, took, the, took yep. them on the car, we thought that was the easiest yep. way, and John and that hadn't seen it assembled, so we took the car to PPG, yep. took the wheels off, and then the five of them, the spares the same, and then it took all day, by the time we sanded them, backmasked nice. them two or three times, to get them to look like that. And that's the sort of thing that people don't quite comprehend. That, no. that was probably 24 hours. Yeah, man paint, hours, yep. 24 yep. man hours to paint those wheels. Yep. So I threw this in because this is one of those things that a lot of people don't understand about a car like this, is that this car is as good inside as it is out. And these guys had really put the that's extra mile better. in mm. to zinc plate the arm they've made and make sure the clips are right. Everything yep. was done. They even bought new window winders from Nissan because they didn't want to try and pull them apart to zinc them because they didn't want to use the second hand ones. And the thing was like, or is, a new car yes. everywhere you look. So, I mean, I could put so many photos in this, mm. this show and I've got a lot more and there is there, a there are thousands there there is a tailspin facebook page yes that's got a lot of photos on it mm. a lot of these photos and a lot more and there's a, if you just search adam and kylie tailspin or the perry garage there's quite a lot of video footage out there of this mm. car they don't have what we have in the sense of hands-on knowledge about the way it was done mm. But these are a really nice set of photos, professional photos that I'm going to show you now that actually shows some of the aspects of this car, I think, that makes it what it is mm. and why it was so successful as a show car. And that grill that we've talked about and making all those things fit, when you see a photo like that, yep. someone used the terminology on the boss at, at someone at on one of my pages that it was automotive jewellery. Mm. And I think this car fits that Definitely. as well. Yep. Because when you look at things like that. Yep. Um, That's right. They had the brace made. Yep. Adam one, organized one piece, the brace yep. and made it so it was removable so we could paint it and polish it and make it all nice. But the reflection of that engine and mm. the chrome on the underside of the bonnet. Yep. And then once again, that use of three colors, um, it's a show car. Yeah. And it does it very, very well. So we pulled apart the fans and painted and Adam made the shroud. Um, oh, look at that. He just goes. Forgot how much gone into this. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. It was crazy, Bill. I spent a week just doing the bog work on the diff housing. Yeah. On the axle tubes. Yep. Just getting it right. So once again, you can see the cross members, the way they've been made and removable, yep. that's all about being able to paint and polish it all because mm. if they're, a lot of times people build them into the car. But I said to Adam, I think I went down and he had one something made all welded in. I go, come on, I just cut that off and put, he goes, why? I said, how do I paint in there and how do I polish in there? Yeah. At this level, you can't afford to do no. that. And if you look at the right hand side corner there where those square tubes go in and then it meets and all those radiuses, that's where the effort is. Yep. And I know you're involved in some of that as well. So all of those lines, the circle in the, the wheel tub, you know, wasn't a perfect circle, so we made it a perfect circle. Mm. All those sorts of things all add up yep. to um, make it what it is. And the same with the door handles. To get the paint really good in behind the door handle was hard. Mm. And these door handles, when we got them, they didn't have anything. You could see straight in yes. behind it. And then Kylie made a little fitting to go in there so you couldn't see in there. All those things add up. And then if you look at that and consider that it's all handmade, so the boot hinges, that whole opening for the boot rubber. Yep. Kylie's made all of that. And then we've the made rubber, all the, the work, lock. The locks, the whole thing. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. 
and then functional. It's got a toolkit, it's got the full, full spare, size yep. spare wheel, and then the little touches from the FB that have been combined back yep. into the car. Those panels she's made that have been painted the same colour as the rest of the trim. The switches for odds and ends that they didn't want, you know, in that old school look. Yep are then hidden in the glove box and all of that glove box the, the parts that are trimmed there are all made in one mil steel that Kylie's made mm. all those the kick plates more speakers that she's made yep and then there's that steering wheel it looks like a million bucks and it was 160 dollars <laughs> <laughs> plus the wheel plus hours. the boss and, yeah. and the man house yeah, yeah of course yeah so this is it um coming back from the super cruise yes that the first summer that's and then this is a, I really like that photo that someone took with us um, on the Super Cruise. And then this was uh, the one they used for their poster, that they did a bit of an old school look. Mm -hmm. And that's out the front of my place here. Um, it, when it came back for a repolish, I think at some stage I took some photos outside yeah. of some of the angles that I liked of the car, yep. you know, because the, car, the car's got some angles that, that to me looks quite nice. Yes. And then it's got some other angles that you go, yeah, don't know what mm. happened there. Mm. But I mean, we were working what we had, and I look at that, and I look at the body lines and all, and, I, and I'm comfortable with what we did. But then there's some other shots that I've seen of it where you go, oh, it's a pity they took that angle. Mm. So that's um, the first Motor X. So the decision was made, um, the car was finished for Motor X, and the way Motor X works for Superstars and, and Grandmaster is that you have to pre-qualify yep and you've got to do that at the other major shows but if there's a car like this that comes along the, the promoters have the option to offer you a wild card that lets you compete against the other people that qualified mm. that year and i said to adam and kylie you need to think about it because you're probably going to get offered a wild card whether you want to compete in your first year or whether you want to run and qualify you can qualify at your first motor x mm. and then come back the following year to try and win Grandmaster. And we were aware that um, X-Boss yes. was gonna be there. And it had just come back from being placed in the grade eight in, in the US. And Adam and Kylie said, look, if we get the offer, we'll take it. We're comfortable with that. So they did that and um, we did, I thought really well, it won three gold, two silver and a bronze, I think. Something I believe that's that, right, yeah. Something like yep. that and at its first show and, and as with all first shows we were still you know finding things and mm. cleaning and polishing and doing all the rest of it and then it went on from there to go to the summer nats and that's it just going through so full driver um, registered all working well we'll just go back to the first motor X. so that was the three of us at that um, first motor yep. and then that's um the medals from that first year and i put that in because it's just a lovely photo of chick um, so that would have been 2016. And then this car on a few occasions has done a clean sweep. So that mm. was at the South Coast Nationals, I think, where it won every category. Um, so then it went to the Summer Nats that first year, um, did really well. Um, I think cust top custom, top custom paint, second body work, engine bay. Yeah, it was a pretty quite impressive a, yeah, list. Pretty yeah. good year. Yeah. Um, and then Kylie put it in the driving events and made the top three and unfortunately right at the 11th hour it decided to have heat sink down at the, the burnout track and refused to start. So um, no start, no, no prize basically. That was for the go well or something wasn't no, it? No, no, for, for, for the prize presentation. Oh, the prize presentation. So they, okay. so they have a top three that all drive out on the track. Yeah, okay. So I wouldn't imagine no matter where we placed if you can't drive mm. off with the trophy you're not going to get one. No. So that was unfortunate. Um, we went through the process of um, diagnosing that and there was some few issues with the car because it was so fresh, really hadn't been sorted. And one of those, the fact that it was running around in top gear all the time, so that wasn't helping it too mm -hmm. much and made a few changes to the electrics that fixed those gremlins. I put this photo in, Dale, because this is from Motor X. I'm not sure if it's the first or the second year, but I just thought it was interesting, they were all the qualifiers on that yep. year. And I look in there and Kylie's not only the only female, she's probably the youngest person on the <laughs> stage. And by, by a bit, some margin really. And I think that's um, 
the amazing part about this whole mm. story and this whole process is the yep. fact that Adam and Kylie, at their age, to make the commitment they did from a time point of view, yep. they really put their life on hold for probably five years yep. to achieve this um, this build and this Phenomenal. goal. Phenomenal effort. And they've gone on to do other cars since mm. for customers and stuff now at Perry's Garage, but it really is a great story and, and we are still very good friends and in fact family um, nowadays. So, um, just a wonderful yeah, you're, thing. You're the godfather, I believe. Godfather. Godparents, yeah. <laughs> mother and father, yeah. yeah. Godparents to um, to their firstborn, young Paige. So she's um, two now, and then we've got Brooke as yes. well now. So our little family's growing. So yes. we've got three <laughs> three of our own grandchildren that are getting getting quite large now. Yeah. All of the the little ones. Um, yeah. So it's been a really good um, story. So then. The nth degree on the whole deal was that after that first Motor X, 12 months later, they've gone back to um, to Melbourne mm -hmm. for the second run and the car totally finished. Actually came back here um, and I put in a week yep. um, with Adam and Kylie just to really fine tune it for that event mm -hmm. because we felt with, they had the runs on the board on the circuit, they'd been all over, they'd been to Brisbane, they'd yep. been to Melbourne um, a couple of times and done extremely well everywhere they went. Yep. And they went back to Motor X and they were the first car and still the only car to win all seven gold medals. Mm. And I think when you look at that, some of those areas, I think it took the year for the judges to quite come to grips with the car. Yes. Um, and one of the th areas that especially was the trim where the concept of the car that we really needed to pass on to the judges is that we were trying to build a car that looked like a concept car mm. that might have come out of GM in the 60s. Yeah. So some of the questions the trim judges would sort of say is, you know, why has it got black seat belts in a red trim? Why has it got a plastic pedal, accelerator pedal? Why has it got this? Why has it got that? The reality was is that we were trying to build a car that was a GM car. Mm. Um, we had a lot of discussion. We didn't want to have billet pedals. No. We didn't want to do things that you do because it's, it's a show car. We wanted it to look like. Because mm. if Holden was building something like that, they would have gone to the parts bin and taken and right, put like it, right? This pedal here and that pedal there. A little bit like effigy, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So there was areas like that where the first year it didn't receive anything in trim. And by the time they got back, mm. we'd done some, well, that Adam Colley had done some refinements in the trim. But primarily, I think it was an awareness thing. Mm. And then I'd done a fair bit more polishing and stuff, even though it won paint previously. Yep. It makes a difference if the car gets better every time the judge mm. sees it, which we were trying to achieve. Yep. And then it won, everywhere it went, it won best display. I mean, those yep. guys really put in to make the car the best it could be Absolutely. every time it went somewhere. Yep. Yep. So that's pretty much the story. Mm. Um, I always try and talk about where is it now. Yep. It's sitting in their shed. It's fully registered. Yep. And it goes on club runs, and they actually enjoy using the car. It's driven. Not mm. often, no. because they've got a lot going on in their life. They've done yep. some house renos recently, and they've got the young kids now, and they've got customer cars they work on, and they have two full-time, they both have a full-time job. Mm. So they're busy people, but the car's there, they still love it as much as they did yep. five years ago. And it's you know it's and part it of the family. And it still looks as good as it did. And it it hasn't in deteriorated in no. any way whatsoever. And I was only talking to Adam the other day, and he, he was moving it, and he said it started first kick, and you know move it the other side of the shed, and yep. it's still on full rego. And if they want to go on a club run, they can go on a club run. Yep. So they love the car to death. Mm. Um, was super successful. It did more um, for them and just win trophies. It, it has developed a, a relationship with Heather and I. Um, their skill level is unbelievable. When I got to work with them on Boss XC, it was very clear to me how much their skill level's grown even since they finished building mm. the car. Mm. And well, that's a credit to you, have because I mean, you, you're a mentor and a teacher to them and they took that on board, but they weren't, they weren't backward in asking for help. They weren't, and I think the, the thing is, and that I'd like to pass on to everybody else, is that in part of this challenge with doing what I'm doing with YouTube, is that to make people aware, you can make something out of nothing. Mm. Um, 
And if you're prepared to learn and to watch YouTube, read books, whatever it is, if you've got common sense and you've got hand skills, mm. you can do pretty much anything. Yep. And you don't have to have, you gotta have some machinery, but you don't mm. have to have the best of the best of everything no. to, to develop a really well-built car. Mm. And this is a, a great example of that. So I could waffle on all night about this car, but I think we've got enough. Yep. And as we always need to do, we need to thank Lovells for supporting us. Yes. That keeps enabling us to, to do what we do and, and bring you um, all that we do. What are we up to now, Dale? I think the next one will be a well, Cobra. Yep, yep. There's not so too many left on the board, Howard. Cobra 400, mate. Ooh, very So good. my first full resto. Mm -hmm. So I've got some interesting stories to go with that because yep. that's, a, to go from this to that is a totally different. It's a, almost a game changer. A different beast. So. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Lovells, yep. um, support the people that support us, and thank you guys. It's a bit of a long one tonight, and I feel like I haven't done it justice, but we talked about doing it in two episodes, but mm. we decided it needed to be one. And if you want more information about this car, look on my on the Astle Design page, the Howard Astle page, the Perry's Garage page, yep. There's or lots the Tailspin of stuff out Garage, there. Yep. or just search Tailspin mm. on, on, you, on um, Google, and you'll be amazed what you find. And um, thanks very much for following. Hit and the like button. Subscribe, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And I mean, subscriptions the last couple of weeks have been sensational since yep. the word went out about the panel van. Yes. So. Well, you want to see the panel I, van? Get I need the subscription to get, going. I need to get back together and do some work <laughs> now. And thanks again, Dale, for um, thanks, Howard. coming out on a Friday night. And, um, it was fun reliving all the pain and was, suffering was. and joy that that car has given a lot of people. So. So thanks very much, and um, we'll see you on the roundabout. And I'm off to Melbourne for Showcars Melbourne. So mm -hmm. I have some really cool showcars yep. to um, keep watching bring the to everybody. Yeah, watch the channel. We've got lots happening, and there's lots of new stuff to come. Hit the so. bell icon, get the notification. You'll know when there's a video up. I think that'll do, Dale. Okay. Okay, guys. Catch Bye you later. Bye for now. Bye for now.